Welcome back, mercenaries, to Fantasy Australia, also called the Ludern region here in War Tales. Absolutely everything in the swamps is trying to kill you, so if you manage to survive the River of the Dead and the herds of crocodile pigs don't kill you, well then the lack of efficient healthcare just might. There is no source of plague cure in the region except for a single band of smugglers who are going to charge you an arm, a leg, and your favorite pack pony to be able to prevent yourself from turning into a plague-riddled zombie. However, as ye old video game saying goes, with great risk comes great reward, so in today's video we are going to be breaking down every single minor encounter you can find the full reveal of the map and where all the secrets are in the region. We will of course begin at the beginning, but first a very quick FAQ. Ludern is located to the east of Vertruz. You can reach the Harag border crossing here by following the road along to the east, but there is another entrance as well. In the very corner of Tiltron, you have the rat infested nest, and then you can navigate on up here, even though this is blacked out on the map. It is navigable by your party. You go past Sovenford Town, and then you are able to go through this mountain pass to be able to make it into the swamplands. This zone right here is extremely interesting because it is a distinct region of the map but is not fully implemented right now by the developers. I'm sure that future updates is going to fully flush out this area, but it was added in because of how it bridges the zone of Ludern to Tiltron. Number two, you gain access to the new Tomb of the Ancients after having completed the first five missions of the Fate of Ludern main story quest. I have a separate video for walking through that main story quest where you can pick up all the quests, the rewards you can get, and then then a designated video for delving into the Tomb of the Ancients and looting out the treasures. If you want the experience of the full definitive adventurer's guide to the region, definitely check those videos out. You actually begin the main quest right here by speaking to a professor, and then you have the border guard here to be able to gain access to the new zone. We're going to start by showcasing our very first secret, something you certainly don't want to miss. We're going to run past the stables and then up to this plateau. Cutting back towards the border crossing, we have this tiny little piece that we were able to inspect on the corner of the map, and it brings up Tracker's Bow, a legendary item, or I, I should keep my terminology straight. It is a rare item. We're going to grab that. We get Tracker's Buckler and a Tracker's Spalder. These items gives you some pretty incredible animal companion synergies, which is perfect because with the Marshes of Farag update, we have animal skills making them more viable than ever before. Coming down from here, we're able to make it back to the first location we would unlock within the region, the Ludern Stables. Here we can purchase new ponies. We have two different um, chests in the back. Both of these will start out locked. The funny thing is that once you pick the lock, you're able to access all the contents without it being considered stealing. So these are free for the taking. Here we can pick up two serenades to be able to begin our first side quest of the mission. His wife 20 years ago was taken away by Plague Ridden. So we can either persuade him that his wife is dead without any proof, spending 2,000 of our influence to be able to gain Tooth Collar and 100 crowns, or if you pick up Bion's Torque, then you are able to simply hand that over and be able to get that Tooth Collar and crowns, saving your influence. Scattered throughout the marshes, you'll be able to find these little effigies. They're tiny shrines here with offerings that are just free for the taking. You can put your own morality on what you want to do with this. There is no system implemented in the game right now, giving you consequences about taking those offerings. Continuing on down the road to the old Edoranian outpost, we are able to meet a very interesting character, Nalid, here at the outpost. Here we can trade Mosquito Probiscus times 20 to be able to get a weapon, Bog Thunder. We're going to hand these over. I've already collected them. The Mosquitoes are a very annoying combat encounter, to say the least. But hopefully fighting them was worth it. Yeah, she wants to move away from the swamp. Makes sense. So she won't have any need of Bog Thunder anymore. <laughs> Ah, uh, yes, the developers really did this. This is a real thing. The Bog Thunder might be my favorite legendary item in the entire game. Sensible travelers will overlook how ridiculous the Bog Thunder is and hold on to it for being remarkably effective against cardinal mosquitoes. You gain the Splat skill. Deals 12 to 23 damage to the target. If the target is a mosquito, the damage is increased by 1,000%. To be clear, its damage ratio is 20 to 40% of your strength, so it is 
absolute garbage against anything but mosquitoes. Also remember that you can shift around your equipment right before battle by selecting your companions through the menu here in the corner. Continuing on from the old Edoranian outpost, we can trek over here right in the corner is a tent and then there's going to be a barrel right here. There's usually a mosquito swarm and this is a secret. I've already entered the location to be able to gain the knowledge point but we're also picking up some rope. Tales of the Phantom Swarm, which will give us an additional knowledge point and some pythons for climbing those cliffside ledges. Here the road forks, and if you travel over the bridge across the river, you'll be able to make it to the first permanent and sizable settlement of the Yebel Clan, but we're going to trek on north to Fat Claw Cave. Fat Claw Cave is becoming a tongue twister for me and is almost obscured here on the side of the cliff face. As we enter, we see that we are blocked. These bears have turned it into their den. Well, you can say that combat was super easy, barely an inconvenience. Once we have cleared the bears, we have a free roam of the cavern within, unlocking this chest, which has a tier three lock. We're able to pick up a golden key, a cure for the plague, and 80 crowns. You can also grab a ship's log, model boat a couple torches over here and what is very important for remaining in the region and the game's economy is that we gain access to these iron ore veins passing further down the main road we've got this zone here which is where you can begin the hunt for ludern quest but we're going to save that towards the end of the video right now we're going to hop into the jail at the jail we can pick up the blueprint for crafting dice and within the jail it compound itself you can speak to inquisitor aria one of the game's rare cases of a named companion. Crafting and then assigning companions to the dice barrel here will generate happiness for the entire troop, very similar to the campfire. Backtracking a little bit here, coming around this curve on the map. Within this zone right here is where the party of smugglers is. They are the only source of a cure for the plague in the entire region. And because you're, you're going to encounter a lot of plague ridden monsters within the forsaken villages very important to be able to remember where you can pick those up as we continue to trek through the swamps we'll be able to make it back to the yabel clan <laughs> if we dodge all of these swarms oh my gosh if you guys have found the video useful then leave a like it really does help support the channel at the yabel clan we have a forge allowing us to repair our goods forge things at the anvil and remember that you can pick up harag restoration so out of the knowledge point there's a lot of ways to be able to improve your raw materials and the amount of armor points that they restore. You get plus five for the um, repair technique from every single region. And then you can also get restoration up here, improved restoration, etc., etc., to make these raw materials stretch out really far. At the town hall here, we're able to find a Edoranian refugee who has been cast aside from every region that he has entered, and the judge here who has ordered that the refugee has to be cast out of Harag as well. We can choose to spend a little bit of influence to let the refugee stay, and if we come back to the refugee, then he gives us Laborer's Headband, his only remaining possession in the world. This will allow you to level up your companions in their profession faster. Very interesting backpack accessory, uh, though I do feel a little bad having taken it from the Iranian refugee. Backtracking even farther from Yebo clan, we come up to the community of light up on the hill within this forest. This is a small religious enclave who is missing a few members and they cannot get the local guard to help them find them. If we cut our way through the swamp, then we're able to cross this bridge to be able to make it to the hangman's tree. And now this location is a little bit unique because it is a time sensitive location. We see the merchant up here who is trapped by all of these different plague ridden. And if we choose to just leave, we avoid combat, uh, but the merchant will die. If you want to be able to save the merchant, you have to dive into combat and as a fun call out here they have a named plague ridden right here a brexia no different than any of the other plague ridden in terms of stats but this guy's got a name with the plague ridden exterminated we can speak to the merchant oh dear i thought those monsters were going to eat me and we gain two spices these are trade goods valued fairly highly depending on where you choose to sell them. Progressing on to the Garusa clan settlement, we're able to sell those spices for 60 crowns each. Going to the town hall, we have a couple chests that we can loot and speaking to Captain Ayama, we pick up a side quest to suss out a group of smugglers who are holed up in Northern Ludern. Just south of Garusa clan, we have Mortage's farm. And as we enter, there are two bands that we need to speak to. The standoff here is that the one group wants to take away Mortagra's wife who's been bitten by plague ridden and the household is trying to hide her. 
She is hiding right over here. Speaking to the wife, we can either report her to the guard or we can give her a cure for the plague to make sure that she is cleansed of the disease. Having healed her, we can speak to the guard. They will accept that she is cured by our potions here from Elazar, which has been withheld to their region, and then they will simply leave. We can then talk to the main farmer, and he will thank us. Here we gain 100 crowns and Tooth Collar, a animal accessory increasing critical damage by 10%. This is going to be especially good on your wolves if you are building them out with a full pack, and you have taken the self-sacrifice no the pack perk where if you have three of them then their critical hit is increased by 50. trekking around this corner takes us to a couple locations frequented on the main storyline we're going to have a quest that happens up here in the forest and then the cursed village of lethiri is also one that you will encounter in the main storyline you can check out my other videos if you want to see how the cursed villages play out as we continue navigating the swamp we come up to Colonel de Tori's Mansion. And I do apologize for butchering the pronunciation of all of these fancy names. Here we find an Edoranian historian. If we use our vision, then we're able to see that there is a cellar locked, and we have to use our golden key picked up in the Fat Claw Cave, I believe, to be able to go on down. Here we get a whole treasure trove of loot, and the historian has followed us down, and he's just beside himself with joy, having found all of this history. We, meanwhile, can busy ourselves looting the place, able to find some pretty incredible stuff. Here we've gotten a weapon and two belt accessories, the medallion improving our willpower, and then light feathers, very unique item here, improving our character's range. This can be applied to any ranged character, so both spearmen and archers. These two shelves have journal entries from the old colonel, um, speaking about the background lore of the region, but nothing else. And if we break to this chest, then we find Colonel Dieterie's treasure map. This points us to a location just away from the hanging tree that we have already visited. Upon arriving at the location, you get this slight discolored patch of ground. Here's the hanging tree. We found the treasure, two sapphires, a poultice, and a falchion. If we bring up the map to be able to show the exact location, it is right here. Hopefully you guys are able to spot it. The poultice gives your character a 50% chance to resist the application of bleeding. This is particularly incredible up against the croc swine who have a chance of applying bleeding on every single one of their attacks right here in Harag. So you're going to be able to get a lot of mileage out of this one. I do want to add as a quick tip for the region, because there are three different settlements here and they all have their own unique courier offering quests, you can pick up repetitions of the same quest from all three of them and they will all give you the reward for the same job, which for some of the big central things like, say, fighting the master tracker, the mini boss of the area, the champion of the area, you can get paid so much for being able to bring him down as long as you have gone to see everybody to pick up the bounties. The old Edoranian mine is a place that is guarded by bandits, one of their hideouts. You can get quests to be able to clear them away so you can have a bounty once you clear them out and looting the chest inside will allow you to gain an ornate key. If we press on northeast from the mine past the secret camp where you encounter a climatic moment in the main quest line, then you're able to reach these series of cliffs I've already laid down a set of pythons to be able to get to one of our major secrets in the region. You have to go through level after a level. It just goes on and on. But once you finally make it down to the bottom, we reach this secret camp right here at the foothills. The camp looks like a drop-off site for smugglers. We get two cures for the plague, a ruby, and a fragment of a small item. This darkened coastline tells a little bit of the story of the region with the smugglers coming with the cure for the plague to be able to sell to the people of Harag. Hopefully someday we also get boat travel. From the plateau next to the Nurpran clan and then past the companion camp, we come to Tools Glade. Hidden here in the forest is this giant red tree. This place is giving me some serious Witcher vibes, and the only things we have to interact with are this camp of druids. Speaking with the druid, we can learn how to make their face paint onto our characters. To make the initial pigment, we have to give over 20 animal carcasses. Let's put our initial war paint here on Axe, our berserker. It seems fitting. There we are, Axe the Miser with a very formidable visage. If we hand over pristine fangs, then we are able to do even more. Clint, our beastmaster, is looking fierce here. And you can keep on doing extra characters for 20 fangs each. This is complementing the new barber tools that they have that will allow you to change your character's appearance, and you get a lot more customization in terms of how your characters look now. 
Though really, all you're going to be able to notice is a difference in the portraits if you have the companion tool up here. Continuing in this portion of the map, we have a cursed village here to be able to explore. I already have a full video breaking down how the exploration of these cursed villages works, so I'm going to rush through it and then summarize the rewards that we pull out of this specific location. Haha, <laughs> and Casta! We were able to break down this debris wall and free this character. With all the plague ridden about, I couldn't call out for help. Truth be told, I thought I'd starve to death behind these planks. And she hands over recipe, harag concoction, and 50 crowns. So what did we come away with out of that? We had one combat encounter in there that we were able to breeze through fairly easily. We picked up a wooden ruler, has a chance to retrieve part of the resources used in tinkering. Very nice. My tinkerer is going to use that straight away. We picked up a wide variety of alcohol, some spare crowns, and other random loot. But the other noteworthy items are this Legion Spear that gives you a flurry of blows. This is a rare drop. You have a very bad strength ratio, but you strike the target four times, meaning that this synergizes incredibly well with applying oils to the weapon. We also got this Harag Concoction, which has spray, so this will help you deal with mosquitoes. It does 50% of the character's max health as damage to all the mosquitoes in the area. If this attack should kill a mosquito, it is captured instead. So if you want to be able to build up your army of mosquitoes, this is the way to do it. And through the recipe that we picked up, we will be able to craft more on our own. What is this going to cost us? four vials, six infected blood, and two mosquito proboscis. Out of all the different animals that you can have now as companions, not sure mosquitoes is the ones that I would gravitate toward, but this is how you do it. Make sure to subscribe to the channel if you want to be able to see my upcoming videos reviewing all of the animal skills, and then we're also going to be visiting the new skills added at level 8 for all your companions as well. Departing from the village, our last piece of business in the area that we need to clean up is battling the local champion. The look on this plague-ridden's eyes is different from the other afflicted. It chills your companion's souls. An unusually powerful plague-ridden is prowling the lands of Ludern. The guard fears that he will spread the plague across the entire region. This is Master Tracker Bayon. I think it's actually a she, even though they wrote key down there. Anyway, level 11 champion. Let's get into this. And here's the battle with the master, the master tracker. 2,760 armor, 30% guard, 1,200 health. Amazing. Their legendary axe devotion for nearly 20 years. Bayan has firmly gripped the handle of this axe, dealing 80 to 100% strength damage and on critical hits gains two rage. Um, they also just gain two rage normally. So, uh, great. They are the plagued organism, so if we can manage to light them on fire, fire will do double damage, but they actually heal from stacks of poison. Disturbed Mind reduces the damage that they deal based on the number of other plagued-ridden creatures in combat. The way that we get other plagued-ridden creatures is from Crazed Scream. Cries out to a number of plagued-ridden reinforcements equal to their Bion's Panic, then removes all their applications. And here, Glimmers of Mortality is how they get the stacks of Panic. Every time you attack them, they get a stack of panic. Our goal here is to very early on set them up with a number of debilitating status effects and then be able to roll over them from there. Axe here is going to be first in to set up slice and dice applying all those stacks of bloodshed. Yeah, bloodshed. 228 health damage at the end of the round for our friend Bion. And then we're actually going to, do we want to leave him here? I think I want to leave him here right now. I'm trying to puzzle through everything in my mind because right now what I want is Jab to come in, be able to play just a slight stance away, use their Horon Strike, which will apply the mark that then I can consume to gain extra Valor points later on and set up Spear Wall to lock them in place for their next two attacks. They try and move, they get rooted... All right, things are coming along quite nicely here. Now we send Eowyn in, and the dance continues to get more complicated. So we throw Eowyn in place. We have Hallowed Strike. If I strike multiple targets, I light them on fire. So sorry, Axe. <laughs> You're now on fire, but hey, so is the Master Tracker. And this fire is going to do 40% of her health as damage at the end of the round, as long as she does not move. 
as long as she does not move. We could go for destabilizing strike here. I'm debating if that is actually worth it. I think we are going to cut through the health with the status effects before um, we would be able to even go through all of the armor. So I'm actually going to move Aon a half step away. Now we want to be able to apply bleeding and for that we go to Odo. He's gonna come up with armor crushing. Because he does damage to the armor, he applies bleeding. And we don't want to follow up with poison impact because that will start healing the master tracker. Then we get Odo on out of the way. Yes, because the next move that I want to make is to surround the master tracker with my animals, which will then allow Clint to do his attack order and allow us to get a lot of damage out of that. So the next moves here are crazed scream. Um, we're going to go ahead and bring in Fuzzy Bear and move along here. The problem is that the animals are going to start getting lit on fire themselves. We're going to go in with Monstrous Strike here. The reason that we want the tracker attacking Fozzy is because if Fozzy is engaged, he gains Relentless, which lets him attack twice on his turn. And that'll just help us be able to pile on the damage a little bit more efficiently. Snipe is going to run up. Unfortunately, I can't get to someone who would apply a damage bonus. But we'll be able to make the attack here, which will consume the mark, gaining two Valor points, really helping us out there. There's the scream, and ooh, the Plague Ridden are a-coming. Fozzie is lit on fire. Okay, so now we need crews who are going to deal with these guys. These guys, <laughs> they string off all the way to the edge of the map. They do not get a turn. They don't get to act on the same round that they were summoned. So we have this round to be able to keep on applying our perfect setup here. We're going to move on up and be able to go for Ferocious Bite right here. It does a little bit of damage. I don't know if this is worth it. I mostly want to be able to hold them in place. And it should only be two rounds until they are dead. And then otherwise, having a lot of Plague Ridden will reduce the damage they do to Fozzie. But it will also be hard to be able to mop up at the end if I let them get out of control. All that being said, Dora is going to come up and help us start whittling away at these Plague Ridden. Because I really don't want Poison to start getting out of hand. Or their, um, their Plague Ridden wounds wearing me out. There we go. Get an extra Valor point there, Dora. Clint is going to come around. And I'm going to fully lean into the damage over time being able to take the Master Tracker out. And so we are going to start to focus on just the Plague Ridden here. Not even going to use the attack... Well, hmm, the attack order would allow them to bring in more Plague Ridden off of the screen, which would reduce their damage. Alright, I'm waffling on what the best strategy necessarily is, but I want the Plague Ridden number to be pretty high. Each one is reducing their damage by 10%. And the attacks otherwise are going to cut through Fozzy like he's nothing. There we go, 41 damage. And normally their strength at 137 would be doing 80 to 100% of that damage. So it's reduced quite significantly here. We're going to bring Loki all the way around to be able to bear on the Plague Ridden. And then who are our other turns? I want to have high Valor Point generation established. Uh, Black Friday, what do I want to do with you? You're kind of clotted out of this area, honestly. You're a valuable pack pony, just stay in the back for me. Here comes the scream, so the enemies will start coming from another direction. Only three of them this time. 538 damage, and done as damage over time. So that was not as much as I thought it was going to be. Pyrophobia damage taken, increased by 50%. Burning would do 20% of their damage. Why is it not telling me the amount of damage that it should do? I had bleeding, so that's is 20%. This is 20%, so that's 40%. Yeah, this is, uh, this is really not adding up for me. It's telling me... It's telling me that we only had 40 points of damage from bloodshed? That's not right. Damage taken increased by 50%. Where's your other damage resistance coming from? Alright, they're doing some they're doing some funny maths. It feels bugged. It feels very bugged, actually. Because what I would have expected is to do 50% uh, of their health out of these two status effects alone. And then we had a full stack of bloodshed out of Axe um, right here. Bloodshed, which I believe was over 100. 
doing extra damage. So I was expecting to do over half of their health as damage in a single round. Instead, we did less than half of their health as damage. So we're going to have to weather this for two more rounds before they go down. Because now things are so clogged up, I don't think I'm going to be able to get another application of bloodshed in here. I'd have to shuffle around people quite a lot, actually, to be able to get that to work. Maybe we can get that to work? Now, nah, let's see if we can wing it around. All right, so Eowyn would have to move to be able to get Axe in there. We're going in the weeds, guys. We're going we're gonna to top this. I'm a little worried here because we've actually cleared out so many of the Plague Ridden that Fozzie's about to take an absolute haymaker out of the enemy. We need to be able to move Eowyn here. We can position her so that she gets at least this free attack. And we get the surrounded status on the Master Tracker. Then we need to move her out to deal with Plague Ridden from some other direction. I'm a little worried if they keep coming from this area. So we take the pass there. Here comes the big attack. 110 damage. That is so bad for us. Here comes more Plague Ridden. They only get a single reinforcement, so her damage is going to be very high. Axe is going to remedy that. Axe is going to remedy that a lot. We're going to come out with... Here we go. Able to attack 62 stacks of bloodshed. I don't know if it's counting. It seems like it should. I guess I'll do it. And then we're just going to lay in here with Rage to be able to get enough stacks so that we'll get more Plague Ridden out there and then reduce her damage, basically. And we're going to stand right here so that we keep this surrounded. Next up, Odo will come in and will heal Fozzy to be able to get 40 health back and cleanse burning. And Odo, you're probably just going to keep on doing that back and forth most of this battle. Here comes the scream coming in from yet another direction. I'm not set up to defend from over there. And burning is applied to everybody. I'm getting pretty worried for Fozzy. We've got a couple answers. Um, it's not great, though. The situation is not great. Uh, looks like we might be switching over. Have Eowyn taunt to be able to take the heat off of Fozzie here. Seems like the Plague Ridden are starting to congregate mostly from this zone right now. We have one turn to be able to respond to then a double strike coming out of the Master Tracker. Uh, so we have to taunt her away from Fozzie. Otherwise, Fozzie just dies. And I really don't want to lose my prize bear. So we throw the taunt. Weakening, surrounded, stack everything up. Destabilizing strike. I'm still expecting next round to just be able to cut through her. So we'll just pass. Illness overcomes her and Baya loses control? What? What is going on? She has a second stage? Okay, so she drops her weapon like the other Plague Ridden. We now have Plagued Claw Strike. Deals 39 to 45 damage to the target and gains 2 rage and applies 5 fever. Are you kidding? And on a critical hit, you gain 2 rage. Crazed Scream is the same. Plagued Organism is the same. Glimmers of Mortality. Oh, we've got Vomiting. She no longer has her damage reduced based on the other Plagued Organisms. They're just free to be able to cut me to pieces and is spewing out a poison cloud. There's so much. The window has extended to be able to hold the UI. This is amazing. Attacks against Eowyn are going to start getting nasty because Eowyn is getting all these stacks of fever, 10 stacks of fever. And then the Master Tracker is continuing to stack her rage. So even though Eowyn is holding strong right now, she will not be able to do that for very long. We're able to heal Fozzie. We're going to just pull Fozzie away. Um, he could get an attack in. We'll leave Odo right here. Um, do I need to respond anywhere else on the map? Doing a quick check. This one's going to come in. It does not reach. Fozzie gets his... Honestly, no, I don't need to attack. The damage over time is just going to be able to finish off the Master Tracker. We just move Fozzie away. Get out of the poison, my friend. Do not die. Thankfully, the Plague Ridden have not gotten too out of hand. I think we have walked a good balance between everything. Famous last words. I know, I know. But things are feeling good here. I love this. Look at the bodies right here on the edge of the Overwatch. We got so many kills. Axe, my friend, you are able to come up, apply that uh, bloodshed, be able to get all the stacks that we can, move out of the poison. And at the end of this round, the damage over time should be enough. There it is. The champion is brought low. 332 damage, and that just ends it. We don't have to finish off the rest of the Plague Ridden. I was worried about that. Here it is, Devotion.
able to give us the exact same attack that we just saw doing all that damage based on strength and gaining rage every attack oh, oh this is gonna be fun to play with Fozzie what happened to you you got a head injury yeah I'm gonna go ahead and patch you up you did good my friend you did so good Eowyn took the brunt of that but all in all I think that we weathered that very well <laughs> <laughs> and from having picked up the contracts to defeat her from two different emissaries, we're going to be able to gain nearly 1,500. Well, we already had some bounty, but we got about 1,000 crowns for defeating her. And here, right by the champion, we find a chest that we're able to inspect, pickering up the veteran roundel. Very interesting. Heavy shield. Able to give the protection skill, high guard, high armor. Also, this is level 7 now, rather than level 11. They've been messing around with how the weapons level. So it dropped down while the character was level 11. The loot dropped is back to the average level of my party. They're going to implement a function where you can um, upgrade legendary items to be able to keep them on pace with your party. So really looking forward to seeing how that is set up. Looking to complete this upper plateau for us in the corner of Harag. We're here at the mine. This is initially blocked by a large group of mole rats and then we're able to access a secondary tunnel out into an additional area so we're gonna hop on in here we've got these people working the mine they say a bunch of beasts they have heard uh deeper down in the tunnel so they've barricaded it you go through you break the barricade you fight a bunch of mole rats and then you make it out navigating through the tunnel brings us out to here where we have a tiny little smuggler encampment over here this is another secret and you'll be able to pick up some loot right here one of the unique bounties you can pick up within this region is fighting off the quote-unquote wolf eaters a group of plague ridden who are attacking wolves and the populace is worried that they will start attacking humans next so you can find this band of uh, plague ridden out here in the swamps we have multiple ways to be able to deal with this pack of plague ridden we can either give them the meat to satiate their hunger or we can give them the cure for the plague so that they will be healed to double our reward or we can attack them to just exterminate them we're playing through as a fairly helpful sort right now so we'll give over the cure for the plague and <laughs> what a transformation and between what they give you as crowns and the reward for the bounty you should be able to pay for uh, whatever resource you spend to be able to deal with them our final objectives are drawing us deep into the swamps and what i actually find to be the easiest way around Navigating the the annoying combat encounters always in the swamps with the croc swine and the mosquitoes. If you follow the high road up here past the stone court, you're able to have a lot less trouble and then you can drop a python to be able to get down to be able to access these deeper locations. And yet another secret right here at the edge of the cliff. Here we gain salt and iron torque and a stylish bow level 7 upgrading those flaming arrows. Coming up to the very northern coast we have Merwen Fishery as our next location. With a little pet boar about to be sent off on the funeral boat. Let's talk to Merwin. Merwin is just trying to bury her childhood pet. We can give five flowers as a bouquet to the funeral pyre and be able to gain a little bit of influence here. Now, she is looking for a pet croc swine, which, in my personal opinion, is extremely hard to keep alive. But if we're able to give it, then we get the blueprint for infused collar and 50 crowns. Ah, the beauty of a croc swine fight where your character can have hit half health, sustained an injury, and still have full armor. Guys, you gotta comment more pig names for me because we're up to Peppa the Third, and I don't see this changing anytime soon. The really awesome thing is, at level 8, Peppa is able to help us find truffles. Back to the fishery, hand over the no- It is horrific that it's added right there. What a beautiful beast. Yeah, find successor to Grit. All right, all right, you do you. Oh, she named him Valiant. That's adorable. The ungrateful creature doesn't seem to recognize you. <laughs> Aw, she loves him. Most importantly for us, we have learned Infused Collar Blueprint here. Able to unlock it in the compendium. At the end of their turn, this unit heals 10% of their maximum health. This can give you so much sustain, say on a bear with a couple hundred health, on top of the Beastmaster passive heal for all the animals. It can be, it can get a lot of work done. I personally favor more damage on Fozzie rather than sustain, but if you want him to be tanking up more hits for your team, the infused collar is the way to go. Ooh, especially because of the berserk mechanic on the bear. If he hits zero, he'll be able to pop off with berserk, and then 
you can heal him up from that. There's some definitely fun things in there for you to play around with. Working our way out of the swamp now, we can come upon the derelict farm. There's a number of different bits that we can interact with here and a locked door down to the cellar. Aha, we have come upon the center of the smuggler operations. The smugglers understand their position is compromised, so they offer you half their supplies if you get them safe passage out of Ludern, or alternatively, you can eradicate them for all of the loot. We're gonna go for helping them out here, and they will meet us outside the derelict farm. The guards have immediately come up and engaged in combat. We got you, mercenaries, it's your lucky day. These smugglers have a bounty on their heads. No need to trouble the mercenaries, we already hired them. Now we get the classic War Tales moral gray side choosing. We're gonna side with the locals, same as I did for the main storyline, and bring down these smugglers. It also looks like it is the easier group to fight against. With some intelligent placement of our allies to be able to take the brunt of the fighting from the smugglers, we're able to clear that fairly easily. Pick up a bandit shield here, outlaw tunic, and some other random loot. And from the captain, we receive our bounties. Next in our path is the old Edoranian watchtower. So it has the three skulls. If you attack different bandits, you're able to reduce its... Um, its strength, the strength of the garrison. If you clear the mine, that takes off a skull. If you kill the bandits over here, that takes off a skull. And then I suppose there's one other group that I pulled a contract for. Not sure exactly where they are, um, but they're all labeled very clearly when you come upon them on the main map. It seems these fights have been rebalanced, so there's not such an excessive number of enemies if you have reduced the danger of the hideout. We should be able to clear this fairly easily. With the outlaws dealt with, we were able to pick over their lair and rummage through all of their captured treasures. Here we get the blueprint for the beehive along with a whetstone case. Damage of attacks from behind increased by 5%. Beehive will be able to produce honey at the end of every rest as long as you add plants to it. For some reason, taking this meal here is still considered stealing. Oh great, now we're wanted. We didn't even get the item. And inspecting the cage in the corner. We are able to find our missing persons from the Enclave of Light. I believe that's what it's called. Because we have acquired the ornate key, we are able to release them. Having rescued them, we gain a little bit of influence and some crowns. We're able to pick up some more belt trinkets from these crates. Unfortunately, the, uh, the cellar door is a fake door. Looks like we have grabbed everything here. Oh, now it's not considered stealing. Okay, so free the captives and then loot the uh, the campfire some other unique encounters that you can find here in the swamps uh, one of which is this merchant here in just the middle of the swamp he's unaffected by the monsters roaming all around him he's trying to interest you in some wares none of which is particularly appealing to a group of mercenaries you can choose to pay for his junk to get him to leave safely and you'll be able to get a backpack accessory or you can spend your influence we're going to spend the influence here and this is a useful backpack accessory for your blacksmith increasing your chance to create a superior item another wilderness encounter is this unit of troops right here right around the stone court if you go up to them these are devotees of alexa graham a champion in another area uh, you can only fight them to be able to resolve. You'll be able to gain a medallion, which is going to give you plus one willpower and 80 crowns if you defeat them. With their members saved, we can return to the Community of Light, speak to Mother Adesti. And here we get the Medical Encyclopedia, Treatise on the Plague, and 80 crowns. These both books. Both books here give us one knowledge point, meaning that this is one of the best side encounters possible. The two captured characters have a few unique lines of dialogue now that they are here, safe and sound. Trekking all the way back to the Ludern stables allows us to speak to Cernes, and here we can hand over the medallion from the Plague Ridden Champion to be able to gain the rewards promised proved to him. Uh, she was taken by the plague and is now dead. Yes, Serenes, she did finally find peace. The Tooth Collar will give your animal companion an extra 10% critical damage. I already have one copy of this item, and you gain 100 crowns. The final task we have to accomplish is to complete the hunt in the region. Here we inspect the man who gives us the Trail of the Phantom Hunt. And we're able to follow the trail of blood on along the path. The trail leads us quite the distance through the swamps right next to the hangman's tree here to be able to resolve our hunt. 
Even though the trackers make the phantoms out to be more dangerous here in the swamps than in any other region, this combat encounter actually isn't harder than you would face them elsewhere, and the same tricks will be able to get you through. A reward for completing it is the recipe for reinforced layer of the ox. This gives plus 4 armor and plus 2% guard. The best part of this armor layer that I see is increasing the guard value. Able to increase your character's effective health pool is so important. With that, if you clear the two rat infestations, then you will have green check marks all across the board. Uh, the main quest is bugged, and the fate of Luderan appears twice here at Garusa Clan, so you're not going to be able to get the check mark here until it is patched. But that is how you resolve every single minor encounter and find every single secret here in Luderan. Let me know in the comments if I missed anything and what your favorite part of the new region is. Next on the list for War Tales content is looking at all of the new level 8 skills for the different classes and doing a Beastmaster revisit because animals have been completely redone and are a whole new ball game with their animal skills. Subscribe to the channel to make sure that you get to see when those videos come out and until next time, thank you guys for watching and have a good one.